A portion of this video is sponsored by Surfshark. This spring, the consumer version of Google's Chromebook will turn 10 years old. What began as a netbook browser on steroids has mushroomed into the second most popular desktop operating system in the world. And you know, I get why. As much as folks like me need the video editing prowess of, say, a MacBook Pro, and as much as I adore gaming on those big desktop replacement notebooks, the fact is that the other 80% of my time is spent in the browser. And for the vast majority of that browsing, the vast majority of the laptops listed in Google's Chromebook shop are more than capable. But here's the thing. Those 81 machines carry an average price of $431. So why would you pay $100 to nearly $300 more for Samsung's Galaxy Chromebook 2? I've spent 11 days trying to find out. Now that too is there for the reason you expect. This is a follow-on to last year's Samsung Galaxy Chromebook, but I don't consider it a proper sequel because as Android Central points out, almost everything on this machine is actually a downgrade from the original. Yeah, last year's 4K AMOLED screen takes a step down to a full HD QLED. The storage and the camera count are cut in half. The Intel processors drop by a grade at each trim level and the embedded S Pen and fingerprint sensor are deleted wholesale. While the chassis that carries all this is still available in Samsung's signature Fiesta Red, it's also slightly thicker and heavier than the first one. In short, this is a mid-range reboot of the original, and from one point of view, it's a much more reasonable computer. After all, Chromebooks have built a big part of their success on being the better value, and by eliminating all of the sweeteners from last year's $1,000 model, Samsung has dropped the entry price of the Chromebook 2 to a more palatable $549, or in the case of my higher-end review unit, a buck short of $700. Despite the deletions, there's a lot to like here. The aluminum frame has an industrial, almost aggressive character with stout hinges that almost pass the one-handed opening test. Fold it past the flat lay and you've got yourself a tablet if you can handle the bulk, or split the difference at the 270 position and you've got a nice stand-up monitor for watching Netflix or Pluto TV. Snag yourself a USI-compatible stylus and the screen will recognize over 4,000 levels of pen tip pressure, or just use the 10 sausage styli the good lord gave you. And thanks to an update that came along with Chrome OS 81 back in April, you can use gestures to navigate, much as you would on an Android phone. Neat. As for the display itself, it's bright enough, maxing out at 400 nits, with slimmer bezels and truer colors than those of Google's Pixelbook Go. Speaking of, it was that machine that made me forget the need for a fingerprint sensor on Chromebooks, and that carries over to the Samsung as well. If you have an Android phone and you don't want to type your password every time you wake up your machine, you can use Google Smart Lock. Just unlock your phone with a fingerprint and your Chromebook will unlock too. That same tight integration with Android lets you remotely turn on your phone's hotspot right from the network menu, eliminating the need for a proper 4G or 5G laptop. It's the little things, you know? On the flip side of the device, the keyboard is good, with ample key size, spacing, and backlighting, but I'm not a fan of the changes Samsung made to the function row. By adding a physical forward counterpart to the back button, it's omitted the media play pause key, which means if I'm playing music, I need to navigate to the notification tray anytime I want to pause that music. It sounds small, I know, but again, it's the little things. On top of that, the glass trackpad feels, I don't know, gummier than others I've used? Maybe thanks to the color matching with the chassis. And finally, I get a lot of double keystrokes when typing on this thing. Samsung is sending me another device to see if I had a defective review sample. I'll follow up on Twitter and in the comments when that arrives. The Galaxy Chromebook 2 offers expandable storage in the form of microSD, which I love to see, as well as a combined headphone microphone jack and dual USB-C ports, either of which can accept current from the included 45-watt charger. Battery life was a win. I averaged seven and a half hours of continuous use from full to flat, and plugging it in for 20 minutes after it died got me back up to 26%, which I tested and found to be good for another two hours of work. That's way better battery life than I get from my MacBook Pro and most of the Windows notebooks I've used over the past few years, even if it is predictably shy of the 13 hours claimed by the sticker on the chassis. Yeah. 
It's 2021, and we're still doing stickers on laptops for some reason. More potent pitfalls and my final thoughts after a word from my sponsor. It's rare that I get to say this about a sponsor, so listen up. I haven't stopped using Surfshark since the first time we partnered. There are plenty of great VPNs out there, but Surfshark is the only one with this combination. One, traditional VPN features like browsing safely from public Wi-Fi or watching geo-restricted movies or TV shows. Let's be honest, you've probably got a lot of time on your hands right now. Two, privacy beyond a simple VPN. Hacklock scans the web and gives you a heads up if your email address or passwords are compromised, so the first person to take action is you. And three, consistent and reliable security without crushing my speeds like so many VPNs. Try Surfshark now at the link below and use promo code Mr. Mobile. You'll get 83% off a year's subscription and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I want to be clear, the Galaxy Chromebook 2 is eye-catching. It's well put together. It's plenty performant. And to my eye, it's much more exciting aesthetically than the endless parade of gray boxes that make up the bulk of the Chromebook catalog. But the 2020 Galaxy Chromebook, last year's, backed up those looks with value adds like the S Pen and 4K screen and more powerful silicon. And if you think processing power doesn't matter on Chromebooks, do what I did and take a stroll through Kevin Tofel's excellent About Chromebooks blog. You'll be reminded that these things can run Linux or even Windows 10 via Parallels Desktop. And to run the latter, you need at least a Core i5. The Galaxy Chromebook 2 tops out at a Core i3 for $699. And the entry level is powered by a Celeron and four gigs of RAM that my friend Ara Wagoner at Android Central calls robbery at 550. And to back that up, she referred me to a number of Chromebooks that pack similar specs for closer to 400. I'll link to some of her reporting in the description as well. Look, I'm not against expensive Chromebooks, but if I'm gonna spend the extra money, I want a lot of bells and whistles in exchange because for all its strengths, Chrome OS still packs plenty of weaknesses. The ability to run Android apps is great, but it's countered by deeply inconsistent performance in this desktop environment with its keyboard and mouse paradigm. And there are weirdly long-standing oversights too, like the inability to apply any kind of logical sorting in the app launcher. Now, combine those platform shortcomings with the device drawbacks I mentioned before, add in speakers that, while loud, are definitely more muffled than those of the Pixelbook Go, and toss in a 720p webcam that's, frankly, among the least impressive I've seen recently. It all adds up to a machine that leans too heavily on its looks and display to justify a $700 price tag. It made all the more bizarre by the fact that at press time, it's possible to snag last year's more powerful Galaxy Chromebook for the exact same price. Yeah, I mean, get that one. Ultimately, it's the pricing that sinks this one for me, because between the solid value of budget Chromebooks and the pricey delights of the higher end, there's a very competitive mid-range. And this just doesn't bring enough to justify the premium it demands. Now, if you do want one, I'll link to it in the description, as well as its predecessor, which obviously I recommend if you can deal with its lower battery life. Disclosure, this review was produced following 11 days with a Galaxy Chromebook 2 review sample provided by Samsung, but I don't produce paid reviews. Samsung provided no compensation and had no editorial input or even an early preview of this video. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Until next time, thanks for watching, and if you can't stay home, then at least stay safe. Wear a mask when you're around others as you stay mobile, my friends. Mm -hmm.